Well, I remember the good times. There were no good times! You cost us our prime new partner, a new space command center, all gone because cool guy here, Mr. Sexy Pants, Brian Gilchrist, blew the mission. You were going to wear this like Flava Flav wears a clock. You can't let one small meltdown destroy me. A second chance? Who doesn't want a second chance? Your old boss wants you back. It's Hawaii, our old stomping ground. Aloha, Gilcrest. You're back in the game. I want to introduce you to your Air Force liaison. She's a fast burner. A double espresso? Morning, sir. I'm so jacked for today. Make that a triple. The old ex-girlfriend. Pause for the memories. I don't even remember why we broke up. Because you're a workaholic who creates work to avoid real work. Well, I'm still working on that. You wrecked everything, and I put my life back together in spite of you. I will be an invaluable addition to our mission. I have lone wolfed it all the way. That's who I am. You're cynical. I get it. I know what you're doing. You're not going to pick my brains. They're unpickable. Before it all came apart, there was greatness in this guy. Did you get the girl? We work together. Oh, why don't you just have what you want? Do you have what you want? Hmm? How is Woody? I don't know. Woody doesn't communicate. He doesn't speak. He said a lot, actually. What did he say? Check out my manly list, dude. I've been working out, and I'm a little too handsome to ever see you as a threat, Brian. Good evening. And he said all that. He's actually very talkative. I think that you came back here for a reason. Let's just talk about it before I explode. About tonight, sir. I had fun. In any of its many forms, I have found that nothing beats fun. Your life is going to become very, very complicated. The future isn't just something that happens. It's a brutal force with a great sense of humor that'll steamroll you if you're not watching. Okay, so first of all, when did Bradley Cooper get so darn likable? He was always the sleazy guy in movies, uh, the smarmy one that you liked despite that because he was supposed to be so good looking. Although, truth be told, I never really got Bradley Cooper as a hunk. But first, playing Chris Kyle, and now here, he seems like a really nice guy. Now, speaking of nice people, so often when they have these romantic films, yes, of course, the lead has to choose between two people. Now, usually, in almost every movie ever made, there's a clear choice where everyone in the audience is like, okay, I know there's supposed to be some tension here, but we all know you're picking that one. But this has a legitimately difficult situation put in front of Bradley Cooper, Rachel McAdams, or Emma Stone. I mean, talk about... Uh, a Clash of the Titans. Both of those actresses have huge male fan bases. So I'm really curious, male viewers here, which one would you choose? Could you choose? And is it uh, as difficult a choice as it seems to me? Uh, I just know that every time Rachel McAdams has a movie, back when I was doing audience reviews, it used to be really interesting that you could count on more men in the audience for her movies than women. Uh, and I think Emma Stone is kind of building a, a similar fan base. Although women really like Emma Stone as well. She's a really interesting uh, personality. And I think she's still trying to find her career. I think she looks quite charming here. She looks very pretty. But I can't quite decide if she's like a really great portrayal of a spunky, uh, you know, military uh, member who, you know, a female military member and a really great new way to portray them, which is probably more accurate to, to the way a lot of women are in the military. You know, usually military women are portrayed as like one of the guys or, you know, really stern, like trying to fight against the tide of sexism. And here she's just part of the group, but still maintaining her femininity. So that's like the positive thing. But I'm also, I get the kind of idea that she's a, a tad unprofessional in her behavior. And that is bad because you're like, well, you know, this is why sometimes people say women shouldn't be in the military because you can't be professional and you're trying to pick up a date. But who knows what happens, you know, uh, in terms of, you know, romance in the military. That's a whole different subject of Pandora's box that we don't want to mix in to this light comedy. Uh, how does the rest of the movie look? Uh, I think that 
that bit about, uh, you know, uh, Rachel McAdams, I, I forget his name, which sucks for him, uh, obviously the guy from The Office, uh, but that bit about him not talking and then Bradley Cooper saying, oh, he does talk quite a bit. I would agree with Bradley Cooper on that. I thought that was a great bit because I could see everything that Bradley Cooper said he was saying and he was able to convey it without speaking. So I thought that was really a lot of fun. Uh, I didn't like the way the trailer started at all. It really threw me. I was like, what's going on here? I even had to restart it because I thought maybe the sound had been turned off. Uh, so I worry about that, that being like kind of indicative of the choices that Cameron Crowe is making here overall. I mean, this was pushed back for a reason. Remember, this was supposed to be an awards contender for this year to be released in the winter, but it didn't quite make the cut. Also, interestingly though, it kind of emulates uh, some a film that did do pretty well during award season, St. Vincent, because not only is Bill Murray here, but you see really quickly a shot of the young actor who played the boy in St. Vincent uh, also appearing in this movie. But I kind of get a strong Descendants vibe here, that Alexander Payne movie with George Clooney, and that was, um, I had problems with that movie thematically, but I think structurally and, you know, in terms of, you know, create, you know, the create, creativeness from Alexander Payne, what he wanted to achieve with it, I think it was very well crafted. And this one seems a little bit of a grab bag, so we'll see how it works out. But, uh, so I'm on the fence here, but I, uh, I like the actors that they're being used, and I think they're being used in some unique ways. And I, again, I do like having such a, a legitimate choice for the main lead in terms of who he should end up with. So I'm um, curious, what do you think? Uh, can you get a bead on this yet, or is it still a little too up in the air? Uh, and also, can you maybe see why it was delayed from uh, you know awards contention the holiday movie season? Uh, or are you like, I don't know what you guys are talking about. This looks great. I can't wait to see it. All right, thank you so much for tuning in, and you can check out some other episodes right now.